So the world of college football took another step in, uh, you know, advancing the, uh, you know, priorities of student athletes this week, which they do every week. It seems like every week uh, college football just keeps taking new uh, new steps forward. And this week it was the story of Baker Mayfield. You probably know about him. He was uh, pretty good for Oklahoma last year, the quarterback. His backstory, you know, he played at Texas Tech as a freshman in 2013. Then he transferred to Oklahoma and he transferred as a walk-on. He was a walk-on at Texas Tech. He transferred to Oklahoma as a walk-on and he had to sit out 2014, which is, you know, I mean, you have to sit out a year when you transfer. Transfer, that's pretty normal. But since he transferred in the conference, he also lose a year of eligibility. So instead of being able to use his red shirt that season, he uh, had to you know give up a year. Uh, that's part of the rules. Most of the conferences have a rule like that. But it's a bad rule because we're talking about a walk-on. It's a guy who was a walk-on at one school, transferred to another school as a walk-on. He shouldn't have to give up a year of eligibility. You're talking about a walk-on, a guy paying his own way. So the Big 12 tried to tra- change that rule. They tried to... Um, you know, make it so that you don't lose that year of eligibility. And for Baker Mayfield in particular, it would have meant that he could have, I think, retroactively applied his red shirt to 2014 and get that year back and play, instead of just 2016, play 16 and 2017. Well, the Big 12 reps voted it down. They, they hit a stalemate. Five to five was the voting. Five of the 10 teams in the Big, 10, Big 12 voted against uh, changing this rule, a rule that doesn't make any sense. And they did it because they don't want to face Baker Mayfield for two more years. You're talking about an All-American quarterback, the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, a guy who's fourth in the Heisman voting. And if he has another year like he had last season, he'll probably win the damn Heisman this year. Other teams want him to be done after 2016, when in reality, he should have two more years left. Now, of course, they didn't say that. They didn't come out and say, well, we voted this rule down because we don't want to face this kid again. Uh, They offered some other nonsense. The Big 12 commissioner said that teams didn't want Big 12 12 teams luring other teams walk-ons with the promise of a scholarship. Now, how absurd is that? How silly is that? We're talking about walk-ons. A school doesn't want to offer a kid a scholarship, but they'll be damned if that kid is going to go get a scholarship from another school in the conference. They'll be damned if that kid's going to go get a free education from another school in the conference. It's ridiculous. And it's another instance of colleges claiming to be all about the student-athletes but doing something that runs completely counter to that. You know, coaches whine about grad transfers. Guys leaving after they graduate and being able to transfer right away without having to sit out a year. They say, well, we developed them. Why should they get to go leave without any repercussions or anything, you know, holding them back? Well, coach, your players helped make you successful and you can leave without any holdups. So, but we see this over and over again, don't we? College football, college basketball, it's not really about the student athletes. No matter how much they say it's about the student athletes, it's not. That's not the main concern. Their best interests are not the main concern. So the next time you hear a college football or college basketball person, or that's a coach or an administrator, whoever it is, say that that's where they're focused on, you can bring up Baker Mayfield, or you bring up grad transfers, or the Baylor recruits who are trying to get out of the letters of intent right now. Because the players, the student athletes, it's rarely about what's best for them.